In this video series, I will teach you how to use this $6 Raspberry Pi camera to record high-speed videos at 660 frames per second. These videos can be played back in slow motion to produce scenes just like the one you're watching right now. Squeezing this much performance out of such a cheap camera isn't going to be easy though. In fact, the first videos that you record are probably going to end up looking completely dark, out of focus, or corrupted in all sorts of ways. This guide will be highly technical and assume that the audience is familiar with the Linux command line environment. Let's begin with a high-level overview of the four-step process for creating one of these high frame rate videos. The first step is to actually record the video frames. Normally when recording video on the Raspberry Pi, you would use something like the resvvid command or a ffmpeg to record through various drivers. This won't work for capturing frames at such a high speed. Instead, we will use a fork of an open source tool called Raspberry Raw. Specifically, we'll use the Herman SW branch of this software since that's what I've worked with in my own experiments. This fork of the Raspberry Raw software is capable of capturing frames at 660 frames per second on the V1 camera at a resolution of 640 by 64 pixels. It does this by manually setting register values on the image sensor chip so that we can read raw, unprocessed image data from the sensor and then post-process it later. The second step involves saving headers, timestamp metadata, and the actual image data. In order to reduce latency, the raw image frame headers are recorded only once and then manually concatenated to the individual image frames after the recording has finished. The third step uses a special fork of a program called DC Raw, which understands the specific raw image format of the Raspberry Pi camera. This program can be used to convert the raw images into video frames that other programs, such as FFmpeg, are compatible with. Now let's review the exact setup steps you'll need to perform in order to reproduce my results. In the remainder of this video, you'll see me use a number of different Linux commands. You can find a text version of these commands that can be easily copied and pasted on the blog post associated with this video. The setup process shown in this video was performed on a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. During the setup process, a version 2 camera using the IMX219 sensor was plugged into the Pi. After the setup was completed, it was found that a version 1 camera using the OV5647 camera could be installed instead with no additional installation steps. The installation process we're about to review was tested on a freshly flashed version of the Raspbian OS with the following MD5 hash. So I start off the process with the standard sudo apt-get update and sudo apt-get upgrade to update the system. This usually takes a while. This is currently sped up by uh, quite a few times. And now we have to reboot. Now that we've rebooted, we're going to enable the camera with the sudo raspy config command. Select interfacing options, camera, And now that the camera is enabled, you'll need to reboot in order for these changes to take effect. Okay, now we've rebooted and we need to install a few different libraries that are required in order for DC RAW to work. And now we're going to install FFmpeg. We're going to use FFmpeg to stitch together the image frames to make our final video. And now we're installing Git because apparently it doesn't come by default on this Raspbian image. And now we're cloning the repository that actually captures the raw frames. So Raspberry Raw reads the frames directly from the sensor. It does this with a more raw level of access than you would get with the resbvid command. Raspberry Raw also has direct access to the registers on the image sensor. This gives us much more control over how we capture images. And now we're cloning DC RAW, which converts the RAW format frames that are proprietary to the uh, Raspberry Pi camera sensor and converts them into a more uh, standard image format. And now we're building DC RAW. DC RAW is a program you can use for decoding the RAW formats of a number of different digital cameras. And you'll notice that there's this warning message here. I found that you can safely ignore this message. Now we're going to build the Raspberry Raw program, which is the program that actually does the image recording. I'm going to purposefully skip a few steps here, which will produce some error messages. I'm going to do this on purpose so you can recognize these error messages yourself and fix them if you experience them. Before you can actually read from the sensor, you have to use the camera I2C command to set up the I2C connection. I've decided to show what it looks like if you try to run this command without some of the prerequisites installed, so just so you can see what it looks like. So if you get that error message, just sudo apt get install wiring pi. Pi. 
And you also need to add the following configuration to the boot configuration. And we're also going to add an entry to make sure that the I2C dev kernel module is always enabled at startup. Okay, we're almost there. We just need to reboot now. And if you see this error message, you just need to sudo apt-get install I2C tools. Now let's try to set up the I squared C communication again. Okay, this is what it looks like when it works correctly. Now we can actually do a capture. So this command will capture one second of video at 660 frames per second. And this command is going to take all of the raw image frames and concatenate a header on the start of them so we can actually process them and make a video. And this command is going to cycle through all of the raw image frames and process them using DC raw into TIFF files so we can process them using FFmpeg. So right now I'm using a Python script that's going to create a file that'll help us use FFmpeg to take the raw image frames and this will make sure each of the image frames appears at the right point in the video. And now we're going to run the FFmpeg command that'll actually process the video. So I'm doing this directly on the Pi. This is uh, sped up about 50 times. It takes quite a while. But once it's finished, we can actually watch the video. Now when you first attempt this, don't expect to be very impressed by the first results you see. And here's an example of what your first video is probably going to look like. It's just going to be blank and black. And that's because in my case, I don't have the exposure set to be very long. In order to actually see something here, we need to either increase the amount of light in the area or we need to increase the exposure on the camera. Since we're doing high frame rate photography, we're fundamentally limited by the amount of time we can set the exposure for. You'll probably be surprised at the amount of light you need in order to get exposures that aren't too dark. You're currently watching a sample video I took with the Raspberry Pi camera placed directly under the lamp that I showed a few seconds ago. The white area that you see is the inner part of the rim of the metal lampshade. Even though the camera is only a few inches away from the 60 watt light bulb, it doesn't look overexposed. You can probably also see a flickering effect in the example video. The flickering effect is caused by the light itself, although you won't notice it in person. This flickering effect doesn't happen on videos that are recorded in direct sunlight. Now let's try to actually record something more interesting that can demonstrate the high frame rate capabilities of these cameras. I've attached some fan blades to a small electric motor and placed it directly under a lamp with the version 2 camera nearby. Take note of how fast and blurry the fan blades are moving at normal speed. Before I start the next recording, I'm going to remove all of the files from DevSHM so that the post-processing doesn't make use of files from a previous recording session. Here is the same scene from the point of view of the Pi camera. The video you're looking at right now is actually an upside down view of the base of the fan blades. I've actually cheated a bit here because I manually adjusted the focal length of the camera so that the image isn't completely blurry. The default focus of these cameras is usually set to be for distant objects. Take note of how dark the picture looks even though we have a bright light directly over the scene. The other thing you'll notice is the narrow field of view and the high aspect ratio. This is due to limitations on how fast we can read data from the sensor. The camera itself is capable of capturing light from a much wider area, but we need to restrict our focus to a subset of the sensor area, otherwise it can't be read at 660 times per second. This problem can be mitigated by filming scenes that are further away from the camera. Both the version 1 and version 2 cameras experience these limitations. However, the version 2 camera does achieve better results in terms of image quality and sensor area that can be captured. In fact, the version 2 camera can record at 660 frames per second with a vertical resolution of up to 128 pixels. This scene was filmed with the model of the version 2 camera that I bought off eBay for $30 Canadian. It features a lens that was designed to be refocused manually, which makes it much easier to achieve good results with. Although this scene is still a bit dark, the results seem close to something that could be actually useful for scientific or entertainment purposes. In order to record scenes that look good, adequate lighting is extremely important. With high speed photography, you will need to think much harder about how light will reflect into the camera than you would with ordinary photography. For example, this scene was filmed with direct sunlight coming almost straight toward the camera. 
An additional background light was necessary for the scene to show the shining effect of the coins, otherwise they would come out looking very dull.